the foreign minister of Germany's new coalition government, Annalena Brebeck, has begun traveling to various European countries. At the beginning of her trip is the leader of the Green Party. She said that she would focus on tackling climate issues in her foreign policy. Because no future problem is bigger than the climate problem for mankind. Like all previous German foreign ministers, he began her journey in Paris. The reason, he said, is that Germany has no closer friends than France. Deutsche Welle says that during a visit to the EU and NATO headquarters in Paris and Brussels, he spoke about the unity of European policy towards Belarus and Ukraine. During her visit to Paris, she discussed the issue of Chinese women's tennis player Peng Shui, as well as the diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics in Beijing. Baerbuck makes it clear that Europe cannot allow the ideological pillars on which it stands to crumble, especially the rule of law and human rights. However, the visit of Baerbuck to the Polish capital Warsaw was not so sweet. Baerbuck told Polish news agency TVP that relations between the two countries included issues of apology, responsibility and compensation for Germany's actions in Poland during World War II. He termed the building of friendship between the two countries as a historic task. Polish Foreign Minister Zbigniew Rau said a number of issues needed to be addressed in order for justice to be ingrained in the minds of the Polish people. He said Poland demanded responsibility and compensation from the new government. Polish media outlet NFP says Warsaw has recently sought renewed World War II compensation from Berlin. But the previous Angela Merkel government has denied it has any legal basis. Baerbuck also discussed Poland's ongoing tensions with the EU since the Polish Constitutional Court placed Polish law on top of EU law. However, he declined to comment to reporters during a visit to Warsaw. On the other hand, the Polish Foreign Minister Rao demanded the cancellation of the Nord Stream 2 gas pipeline project from Russia to Germany. The NFP says Yaroslav Kaczynski, chairman of Poland's ruling party, sees further strengthening of the EU as a strengthening of Germany. On December 5th, he met with the right-wing European leader Marine Le Pen of France and Viktor Urban of Hungary. In a meeting with the U.S. think tank Foreign Policy Research Institute, Nils Schmidt, a foreign policy spokesman for the German Social Democratic Party, SPD, said that the SDP, the Green Party and the Free Democrats or the new FDP the foreign policy of the government will carry forward the previous policy, there is no danger of major change. Everyone agrees on Europe and the Atlantic policy. As a new field, he emphasized the need for EU-US cooperation in disciplining internet companies, ensuring security of personal information, regulating new technologies such as the 5Gs and artificial intelligence, and even controlling epidemics and developing new drugs. However, he acknowledged that their numbers were not enough to defeat China. The main reason for this is that China has posed a threat to Europe as well as the whole world system. In addition to challenging the democratic system of government, Catherine Kluwer Ashbrick, chief executive of the German think tank German Council on Foreign Relations, or DGAP, says in an article that the new German government's foreign policy is going to be very different from Angela Merkel's opportunistic and mercantilist foreign policy. He says the German government wants to reduce economic dependence on China by uniting the United States and like-minded countries so that they can protect human rights and international law while maintaining economic value chains. They will emphasize Europe's ability to set rules and standards in the international arena, such as technology, cyberspace and artificial intelligence.
but that will only be possible if Germany is able to rapidly improve its digital and data capabilities. And in order to take the lead in climate-based foreign policy, Germany needs to set and implement its internal climate goals. However, the differences between the three parties are noticeable and in some cases the policy is not clear. Russia and Turkey. For example, lack policy transparency. Defense policy is also not at all ambitious. It has been said that 3% of GDP will be spent on defense, however. It was not immediately clear in which international budget the budget would be used. Next year, Germany is set to unveil its national security strategy for the first time. Where the government may be forced to cite Germany's own interests. With this, Germany may finally be able to assert itself as a normal foreign policy player. Theresa Fallon, founder of the Center for Russia-Europe-Asia Studies in Brussels, doubts that the ideological policy that Germany is pursuing towards its most important trading partner, China, is easy to implement. The Deutsche Welle says that Angela Merkel's government also established relations with the Dalai Lama in Tibet, speaking ideologically at the beginning of taking power. Later, she accepted the reality and proceeded with the policy of maintaining relations with China. Analysts discuss Germany's new coalition government's China policy, but do not say much about the major problems on Germany's borders. Poland's position in the EU is against a strong EU. Because in the midst of a strong EU, Poland sees a strong Germany. More than seven decades after World War II, distrust still exists among European liberal ideologues. No one is sure how successful the foreign policy of the new German coalition government could be in this fragile situation of the EU.